Proverbs chapter 11. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So having two different measurements, one that is wrong and one that is right, to gain more money, to pay out less money. But a just weight is his delight. Now there's the contrary. False, the opposite thereof is just. Get in Matthew 6, 24. It's on his weights and balances. I mean, you would have a, a piece of iron, or they'd probably make another one out of wood and make it look like an iron one. And you would never touch them. You would never hold them. You just never know. It's improper business practice. That's what it is. It's an abomination for improper business practice, the Bible says. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Uh oh. You know what America's coming to? Shame. Shame is the result from pride. You can't break the Bible, it will come. And if you don't get your shame here on this planet, You'll get it before the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. But the lowly, that's the opposite of pride, is wisdom. God's wisdom that we've been reading about. First eight chapters. You'll never find in the Bible anything that shows associated with God with pride. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. It's a right motive. But the perverseness, opposite of upright, of the transgressors shall destroy them. So you can have a path that is guided or you can have destruction. It's up to you. Riches. Profit not in the day of wrath. Luke 16. The man in hell couldn't keep his riches. But righteousness delivereth from death. Christ, our righteousness, delivers us from death and gives us eternal life. Money won't be able to buy you a spot in heaven. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. Our righteousness is in Jesus Christ. But the wicked, opposite of righteousness, shall fall by his own wickedness. You shall reap what you sow. Where the perfect... God will lie, will give him the way. And there is no falling in the way of God. The righteous of the upright shall deliver them. But but the but transgressors opposite of righteousness shall be taken in their own naughtiness. Now we saw that in verse 5. Haman was a transgressor and he was caught on his own gallows. Ahab was caught with the old field of, with Naboth. Now when a wicked man dieth, his expectation shall perish. And we saw that in chapter 10, verse 28. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of wicked shall perish. You're going to see in Proverbs things repeated. A verily, verily, need to pay attention. We've already seen many things repeated. When the wicked dieth, his expectation perishes. You know, you can be a Christian, have, have wickedness, and when you die, it won't come to be. Worldly goals. And the hope of the unjust man perishes. Well, that's a verse where they're both the same. 
If you are a Bible believing Christian saved and washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, your expectation, your hope is going to be for the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you're going to have some things out there you're going to hope that, that won't line up with the Bible. They're earthly, sensuous kind of things. And you'll be judged for the motive and act thereof. But that which is for Christ, the blessed hope is the Lord Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13. The wicked, unjust man, their hopes are everything. It's, it's fleshy, worldly. And they won't get those in hell. You won't get uh, the hope or expectation if it burns up at the judgment seat of Christ. So, the righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. Place. That's judgment. I mean, we get into trouble. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's a judgment. And hypocrite. Matthew 23, 13. With his mouth. There's a mouth again. Destroyeth his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. When it goeth well with the righteous, the city rejoices. When the righteous are in rule, when the righteous are doing what they're supposed to, the city has joy. And when the wicked perish, there's a shouting, yeah, this wicked man is dead, finally. That's not so in America. Chapter 11, verse 10 is a general truth that does not follow with America. The more a city does wicked, the people rejoice. And the more you put down the Christian in the Bible and God, they rejoice. By the blessing of the upright, the city is exalted. General truth, but not in America. But it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. Well, America's being overthrown right now by the mouth of the wicked. He that is void of understanding, uh, excuse me, of wisdom, he has no knowledge, despises his neighbor. But a man of understanding holds his peace. You don't say. You don't be too quick to, to speak out. Why don't you go sit at the table? A man of void understanding despises his neighbor. He doesn't have all the facts. He doesn't know what's going on. The wise man knows what's going on and doesn't say nothing. I don't know where I am, I just lost my place. Oh, deliver. A talebearer, verse 13, reveals secrets. The newspaper and media. But he that is of a faithful spirit, that's not the media, concealeth the matter. Some things that don't need to be said. Some news events and, and goings on does not, not need to be said. And there are people out there called tale bearers in the Bible and they speak. Where no counsel is, the people fa fall. Getting no advice. Good advice. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Yet, People who have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, get their advice on something. 
You got in Washington, D.C., a bunch of people who are in offices, and they don't even know what the idea of whatever the idea is. It's all a political thing. He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for him. We talked about surety before. This is a guy that signs a piece of paper by someone he doesn't even know. Oh, he's going to pay. And he that hateth surety ship is sure. I had somebody break down in complete tears on that because I wouldn't sign a paper. For somebody that was in jail. You think I'm going to trust you being in jail and you've been in jail before and I've only known you not even six months. And you think I'm going to sign your name? And you profess to be a Christian when I tell you the Bible says I am not to sign your paper and you break down bawling? I'm not going to sign it because you don't even know what the Bible says about it. A gracious woman retaineth honor. Self-explanatory. And strong men retain riches. And they're going to fight. They're going to battle. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul. But he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Matthew 7, 1 and 2. A man that shows mercy, he, he's well liked. He, he, he's well spoken of. But someone who's cruel who won't give in to mercy. People won't hang around with you. You're, you're not going to have friends. You're not going to have... You're going to have trouble. By the way, God said... You know, those that say, Judge not, least ye be judged. When God says right after that, with what judgment you judge, will be me unto you. If you're merciful, God will return mercy to you. If you're cruel, God will give you cruelness. You'll suffer what you reap and sow. For doing wrong. The wicked worketh a deceitful work. There we go. No wicked can perform a good work. So when a wicked set out to write a Bible, it's not going to be a holy Bible. It's going to be a deceitful work. When a wicked man sets out to build a religion, it's not going to be the right work. It's going to be a deceitful work. But to him that soweth righteousness... The sower that went out and sold the seed, and the seed is the word, shall be a sure reward, Galatians 8, 6, 8, and 9. A reward by God. Crowns. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. Righteousness is life, evil brings death. Look at that. It's plain and simple. There's only two ways, God or the devil, life or death. They that are of a forward heart, we talked about that before, are abomination to the Lord. But, notice the buts, such as are upright, opposite of forward, there you go. What's a forward person? Not only is he perverse, 1720, but he's downright. <laughs> he's opposite of upright. In their way are his delight. Though hand joy hand shake hand shaken, Psalms 2, the wicked shall not be unpunished. And they may get away with it on planet earth, but they won't get away with it at the great white throne judgment. But the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Now, is that your child? Your children? A sower went forth to sow seeds. Those are the ones that, that 
you witness to and get saved, that's not your physical children in the New Testament. Now, the Old Testament is a different story. As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout. Now, you'll see when you go to the meat section of the grocery store, you'll see that there are pigs' feet, pigs' ears. You'll see every once in a while, you'll see the nose of a pig being sold. Picture a jewel of gold in that nose. Now, I've had the opportunity in Waterford, there, there, was, there was a pig farm down by the gar by the by the dump, I've got to see pigs. And it's gross. <laughs> That's not the place where you would see a jewel of gold. Alright? So is a fair woman. She looks beautiful. She might be on a magazine. She might be selling a car. She might be half naked trying to sell ice cream. I don't know. Which is without discretion. Good sense. You no, know, she may make all that money, and then by the time she's 60, 60, she's blown it off. She's blown her body with drugs and stuff. That's no, no discretion. You might as well, instead of giving her a, a, a jewel, go give it to a pig. Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute. So is a jewel of gold in a swine's... As a jewel of gold in a swine's snout, so is a fair woman without discretion. The Bible just called a woman... Without discretion, I called her a pig. Jesus calls a woman a dog. A false prophet, Peter calls a pig, a woman. A false male prophet, he calls a dog. So where do you get the idea? We used to, you would call someone a pig and that means they don't know how to eat and stuff like that. That's the wrong expression. It's for a woman without discretion. That's a pig. Pig with a brassiere, I guess. The desire of the righteous is only good. Is that you? Are you a Christian and your desire is good? And God doesn't say perfect. God will leave you with good. For there is none good, no, not one, but if you're going by God, then you can be good. Our expectation should be perfect. But God said, uh, the righteous only good. It should be, at least I'll give you a good stand if you want to do good. But the expectation of the wicked, opposite of the righteous, is wrath. Romans 2.5. James talks about wars. War comes down to something I want that you have, and you're not going to give it to me. There, now, verse 24 is one of them verses in the Bible that doesn't make sense. There is that scattereth yet increases. Picture a guy who he's, he's got a sack of seeds. And he takes that entire sack and just throws it everywhere. Now he has an empty bag. A, widow's, a, a widow takes all she has and puts it in the collection plate. And there is that what there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but is tended to poverty. There is a guy in and I believe is in Luke. He puts everything into barns. He says, I am going to build more barns. And God says, thou fool, you're going to die tonight and your soul's going to go into hell. And you stand before the judgment seat of Christ as a Christian and you spent your money on tracks, you spent your money on missionary, and, and you just barely got by and God says, comes up at the judgment seat of Christ and says, look at all the souls, look at all the crowns you get. That's what that verse means. 
Some people may look at oh, look at you, you're a poor Christian. Look at that. Peanut butter jelly sandwich. <laughs> look at that. Oh, but the riches that you have in heaven where you put the money in the right place and your time and effort in the right place. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that watereth shall be watered also unto himself. There is no dry water. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 4. Somebody who, now, when you say liberal today, I mean, that's not what the Bible is talking about. It's talking about a person who is right in the Lord, who would be reading the Bible, saying, <clears throat> Lord, <clears throat> I'm going to give you everything I got. And to the world, that, what are you doing that for? You give money to that church? You give money to that mission? You're a fool. And Lord will make you fat. And I'm not talking about the stomach section. I'm talking about with riches when you get to glory. And he may even show you and give you showers of blessing here on this earth. And he has and he is in my life. And he'll water you. You know a plant needs water? Like into a plant. What did the sower did? He sowed seed. What is that? That's plants. And those that brought up the 30 to 60, 100 percent, God's going to give you water. I, I, I have planted Paul's water, but God gave the increase. There's the formula. It's planting the seed. Verse 26. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. America uses corn for fuel and sells it to our enemies. While there's starvation going on in this country. There are people who are working a job and are starving. And they don't have credit cards. And they don't even have a car. They're not being paid enough. But the government will not reach out to them. That guy again who, who built his barn and wanted to build more barns died in his sins but the blessing shall be upon the head of him that sells it hey I need something to eat sell it to me again the government how much food have they got overstocked in anywhere and everywhere throughout this country and they're not giving it to people for whatever reason how they're destroying the farm Wait that God has three and a half years where there will be no rain, water. Then you try to get food. He that diligently seeketh good procureth favor. All right? But he, the opposite, seeketh mischief. It. Run that it back to mischief. He that seeketh mischief, it, the mischief shall come unto him. We've been reading about sowing and weeping. Reaping, excuse me, not weeping, reaping. You want to get into mischief? And the Bible says mischief will come back to you. And what is the rule of harvesting? You get more than what you planted. You know, if I were to take one corn seed, and God were to take that one corn seed and my plant in the ground, and it would produce a plant. One corn seed. And I watered it, and I gave it proper fertilizer. You know how many pieces of corn I'm going to get from that plant when it continues to be healthy? So if I plant mischief, one little mischief thing, you wait to see what all the mischief will come back to you. I plant one one little seed in the ground, the gospel. Oh boy. He that trusted in his riches, we've been reading that through this whole chapter, shall fall. God. Got a mask. No, I had a mask. Where's my where's my wallet? As you're standing at the great white throne of God, butt naked. There's no pockets. No wallets. No more riches, you'll fall off into the lake of fire for all eternity. 
God will just drop you. But the righteous, notice the contrast between the righteous and the riches. Jesus said it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle. Paul writes to Timothy, I think it's chapter, I forget which one, but it says where the love of money is the root of all evil. James speaks out that in the tribulation, those that are rich, it will be completely impossible for them to be saved. There is, I mean, listen, there are saved Christians that are rich, but there's just something about money that distracts people as their God. Their love for it. Take a five-year-old. It's his birthday. Hey, he's got the cake there. There's the decorations all over the house, and people are there. His friends are there. And, and here's all these colorful presents, right? And here's his nice one. It's got decorated polka dots. He opens it up. It's got $10 in it. And watch his face. And here's, here's one. Here's a box. It's got happy birthday written all over it and, and little balloons. He opens that up, and it's a Bible, and you see what his face will be. He, bought, he would be more happy to get the underwear that mom bought him than the Bible that aunt bought him. He that troubleth his own house. There are men that trouble their house by being jerks. By being an alcohol, by being selfish, by being ungodly, shall inherit the wind. Imagine the guy, all right, here's your inheritance, the wind. The guy's going down trying to catch it in a jar. You're not going to. You can't even see it. That's what it's saying. Nothing. <laughs> Gone. Well, I know a guy. Wait for the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. See, you can't look to the earthly. You gotta look to the eternal. And what we're gonna, what we ever get to the song of Psalms, there's one there that says, "Listen, the people who don't get judged it makes other people think, hey, you know, I can get away with it on the earth." You haven't looked to eternity. That's why people won't trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. They'll look at other people and say, "Well, look, he died rich and got away." Yeah, but where is he today? Well, I know somebody who did this, and you know, they didn't get cancer, they didn't get, die, they didn't end up in a hospital, they lived perfectly well and all that, but that's not eternal. When you face God Himself, and He dishes out to you your harvest. You know? And you don't even know how many people are doing what you're doing and because you're doing it. How would you like to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and have God tell hey, I, hey, I want to thank you very much. Oh, yeah, Lord, what do you want to thank me for? You were a billboard for cigarettes. People saw you smoking and they smoked because you smoked. Now let's put that to the fire. You may be charged for somebody who will get lung cancer even though you don't. How's that? How'd you like to be charged with having, helping a Christian begin smoking cigarettes and spend his entire life trying to give it up, trying to get rid of it, and God said to you, that person suffered because of you. You know, mothers and fathers are going to suffer that of drinking and smoking that they taught their children by doing it themselves. Oh, they're going to suffer for that. This is a sowing and reaping chapter. And the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. 
That's another opposite of America today. I'm sorry. There are people who are given a job, who are given position in the job because of race and sex rather than uh, experience. And you know in your life, if you work, there have been foolish people who have been put in authority. Shall be a servant to the wise of heart. That's not happening in America. The one that does good in the job should be the one that's promoted, and those who don't do good be under that man. It, it turns out to be quite opposite in America. Told you, we're going to point out where America's wrong. America is not Bible. You want a revival in America, you've got to go through Proverbs and reverse where I'm telling you where America's wrong. Plain and simple. The heart of the righteous is a tree of life. You're without life. You witness from the heart, not just from the head. You go out passing out trash, not because your pastor tells you to, because you want to from the heart. And he, you know, talking about, instead of talking about sowing and reaping, and he that winneth souls is wise. So, when somebody comes up to you, I don't think what you're doing is, is proper. I think you turn more people away than blah, 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 blah. you try to win souls. Well, no, I let my light shine. You're a fool. What's opposite of wise? What, what, what have we been learning? You're a fool. All right, what I'm doing may be wrong, but God has been blessing it, and I am following the examples of the apostles in the book of Acts and Paul in the book of Romans. The Bible says I'm wise. And if you don't, what's the Bible say? The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that wins his souls is wise. You know how many souls Jonah won to the Lord? And yet he did not want to do it. You know Cornelius and his family and his friends got saved and Peter did not want to do it. That's the difference in the heart. Peter fought with the Lord. Lord, I'm not going to eat this stuff. You just shut up. There's some people down there, they want, they want you to go. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed. In the earth. Now that's the Jew. That is an Old Testament promise. Matthew 5, 5 in the millennium. That is not us. But there are too many Christians out there looking for that promise that is not for us. You know, if God gives me $10, he'll give me 10000 You can't find that. I've tied to the Lord and all my bills are going to be paid. You can't find that. Now, it may happen, you you may get blessings and mercy from God, amen, glory to God, but that's not a New Testament promise. Remember, when we're doing Proverbs, Jesus hasn't even been born yet, never mind his, his death, burial, and resurrection. Much more the wicked and the sinner. Well, look at that, the wicked and the sinner. God is going to pay the wicked and the sinner back just as much as he's going to pay the righteous back. Everyone will be paid. There is a day of reckoning coming for all people. But Jesus. Every man from Adam to the last man born will stand before God the judgment seat of Christ or the, or the great white throne judgment and will give an account. Unless it's under the blood of Jesus. That's a wonderful thing.